Thanks for staying with us. Now, World No Tobacco Day brings awareness of the health issues and dependency issues related to tobacco use. World No Tobacco Day stresses the importance of making people all over the world aware of the health dangers of using tobacco. It also stresses the addictive nature of tobacco use. Now, according to World Health Organization website, the member states of World Health Organization created World No Tobacco Day in 1987 to draw global attention to the tobacco epidemic and the preventable death and disease it causes. Now, World No Tobacco Day is supported by the medical organizations around the world. Many groups and organizations use this day to encourage individuals to quit smoking. Hmm. So, because smokers are liable to, to die, die young. He's written clearly <laughs> on the park, like I don't get. But guess what? I had an uncle when I was growing up mm -hmm. who was a doctor. And it was a heavy smoker. smoker. So I couldn't reconcile that. Mm. There are some of them who actually smoke till they drop, even well into their 90s. No, even if they know. Medical doctors. Now, even them. when they even know that it is, it is, you are liable to die young, they still smoke. It makes so no difference. We just pray because you're doing a lot of damage exactly. you know, to your lungs. Long it's a habit. It's a, yeah. Because it's a habit and they're already addicted to it. So they can't just You know, get sometimes I really cannot like understand that. how people get addicted to cigarettes. I'm sorry. Uh, like the thing smoke. is so so incom like watching it is so inconvenient for me to watch someone smoke. It's painful so to watch. Like it's painful to watch. I'm not wondering how would you say you are addicted to smoke with alcohol? I would understand though, but cigarette. I but don't even get for it. alcohol for me, I don't see what I don't like. I don't even see the hype. I don't no, see but I said with that one at least I can understand. Because I can taste it. People shouldn't say anything about alcohol. Alcohol is is good. <laughs> it's very serious? good. <laughs> All right. So what did you find for us in the news? <laughs> In the news today, I'm talking about Omokri, um, Rena Omokri, and he is a, a socialite in Nigeria. He was talking about, he tweeted on his page that um, um, Africans have abandoned their culture. In the process, also abandoned their, um, what's it called, identity in terms of their um, way of dressing, the way they dress, their language. And you see a situation whereby an African goes to Dubai for one week and comes back speaking an like, an, <laughs> like an American. And as an elocutionist, this actually struck me that, no, it's wrong for you to go um, outside and come back and using the language incorrectly uh, because okay. it has to do with a lot of sounds. Somebody will look at you and say you two you are forming spray but spray. I, no, it's not spray spray. <laughs> no, she's just trying to speak. Yeah, yeah. I get I get I, that. I don't I'm just believe, No, I don't believe we have abandoned our dressing. Mm. Because me, for one, I've not abandoned. Every Saturday, I must tie my daily. Oh. Do you <laughs> understand? Day, yes. So that's ridiculous for me. Mm. But when it comes to language, I, mm. I think I totally accept that. Yeah. I especially, agree with that. Especially those of us that are abroad. Mm. You know, most of us don't. Well, it depends. I, I, people abroad some will argue work. with you, yes. No, I because I, I see would, a lot of yes. people, actually, the Yoruba culture, they don't lose no, their language, no even way. wherever they are. No Igbo way. people as well. Yeah. Okay. You might call but some, no, some but Yoruba people are losing their language. But it is also stated that Africans, on the whole, actually lose their identity in the process okay my story outside. is about um school private school proprietors they are mm. at loggerheads with the federal government through the presidential tax force mm. they are making um a case for rejecting the suggestion by the ptf anyway still a suggestion but they are hoping to do that to take over private school hostels to convert them to isolation centers and for quarantine centers, mm. centers. and i think i totally agree with the private school um, proprietors, because I, as a parent, if I hear that my school, my, my child's child school, school was converted, I, I'll definitely automatically lose um, mm, confidence. Be yeah, we're paranoid. Absolutely. You'd be paranoid. You know, Absolutely. So I really do understand they're trying to save their businesses, and they're, uh, they're also of the opinion that there are quite a number of um, abandoned hospitals, abandoned mm. buildings that the government can convert instead of exactly. schools. Exactly, instead of schools. Yeah. schools. No, right, so know, much you know the problem. Quite, um, Sorry, they uh, don't want to start from the scratch. Yeah, they, they just want to want just read tap on something. Yes. That, yeah, mm. my story is quite a sad one. Um, okay. um, the trend has been going all over social media. Even my um, prominent people are beginning to post, like um, Moabudu, Nika Adeyemi. You know, mm. they posted justice for Uwa, and I think there's another young girl called um, Tina as well justice for them. Uwa was a young girl um, that went to read in a redeemed church in Benin City. She's a 100 level student. She went to study in a church and while she was there um, some men attacked, you know, they went into the church, used the extinguisher, 
hit her head and you know raped her in the process and so the security abandoned guard her and abandoned dead. her for dead the security guard rushed into the church you know they he even thought she was dead because she was in a pool of her blood but she moved a bit but by the time they, they rushed her to the hospital you know they found that she she you know she she was dead they pronounced her dead so um they're calling the they're calling for justice for her i hear the governor of edo state as well has spoken i think the the, the vice chancellor of the university as well everybody's calling for justice they have to find those killers it's quite sad you know for me to you know a young girl her life just cut short just like that it's quite a sad one what even the young girl avoided? the teenager girl that one was was hit by a, a police bullet you know, so it's so sad. Bullet. Yeah, it's so sad. Like I mean, they shot at her. She was mm -hmm. in her mother's, and that girl was quite young. She was even younger than um, who I Yeah, she was wow. in secondary school. Yes, I think that um, Tina is about thirteen or fourteen or so. That's, That's so, so sad. sad. That's very sad. So we need to call for justice. You know, and the global one that is going all over as well is um, for George, George Floyd. Floyd. So yes. there's there's a call for justice, and we must find justice for the people. Absolutely. All right. So um, in the bid to check on on our um, what's it called on our guests um. We thought to call a parent because we today we're talking about parents and um, their pressure. She is a mother of four, and she is a uh, what's it called a, a, a beauty and image consultant. Noma Efanga, if she's there with us, Noma, are you there? Yes, I am. Wow. Good evening, <laughs> Noma Efanga. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. All right, so we just thought to check up. We just thought to check up on you because we're today we're discussing parental pressure, and we know that you are a mother of four. So we just want to find out how you're doing, how you're coping, and you know, with all this juggling schoolwork and all of that, how have you been? And um, since the lockdown, wow, it's been um, well. I can't, I can't even. I can't even describe it. It's 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 been a whole new level of learning for some of us you think that you know quite a bit about parenting until life throws you another one and then you realize oh i have to go back to level one so it's like learning afresh you know no one has ever been in a pandemic at least in this in the last decade or century so it's a new experience i'm used to working from home while the kids go to school and I have all the time, my space and all of that. But all of a sudden, I have to share this space with four living beings, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Extra, so add, sure. extra attention <laughs> at the same time. Living beings with all of the energy with, I mean, it's a whole lot. But I had to relearn to take life one day at a time. Some of us can be perfectionists in some sort of way. So we just want things to be exactly the way we want it. But now we're learning that, you know what, take it one step at a time. If you feel that you've had too much, take some time out, breathe, and go back again, try again. So we're just taking it one step at a time as each situation occurs, schooling, handling each of them in their different sections, well, we're just taking it one step at a time. It's been a lot, but it's been good so far. At least now we have a little bit of a hang of it. So it's much better than when we started. All right. So now you are a, what's it called, consideration coach and an image consultant. So we cannot wait to have you on Waze. We just thought to check up on you. This is just a quick call to, to be sure you're doing well. And we look forward to hosting you as a guest on the show. Thank you so much for checking up on me. And I'm also throwing it out to you. I hope you all are doing very well. Yes, yes we, are. we are. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Enjoy your evening. All, all right. right. Take care. All, all right. right. Bye. 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 All right. So our darling Morenike Basharu will join us. Dr. Morenike Basharu will join us right after the break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.